May 1940 begins one of the biggest tank battles in the history of World War II. This is Battle of France. The French outnumber the Germans almost 2 to 1, but little do they know that it will have no effect. The FCM 36 is well protected by 40 millimeters of frontal armor, but its short barrel 37 millimeter main gun is designed primarily for infantry support and is all but useless against Guderian's tanks. Leading the German army on the Battle of France is General Heinz Guderian. Advancing towards the French are dozens of the formidable Panzer Mark III. It is armed with a long-barreled 37mm cannon, giving the Mark III much more killing power than the French tanks. French was not ready for the aggressiveness of the German army and their new tactic, the Blitzkrieg. But as the German Blitzkrieg cuts a narrow swath westward, its flank becomes increasingly extended and poorly defended. The French realize that this is just the break they need and send two battalions of their heaviest tanks straight into the vulnerable German flank. When they entered the village of stone, they were unaware that the German was already waiting for them, in an ambush. Nicknamed the Colossus, the Sharby One is protected by 60 millimeters of frontal armor, making it virtually impregnable. Combined with its incredible firepower, the Sharby One is the most powerful tank on the battlefield.
Even though the French uh, tankers fought bravely, they were unable to recapture the village of stone. The British has been able to punch a hole through the German defenses and now are trying to push them back. The Matilda II is equipped with a two-pounder cannon, capable of destroying German armor at a range of 1,500 meters. But its most impressive feature is its 78 millimeters of frontal armor, making the Matilda II the best protected tank on the battlefield. To be able to penetrate the Matilda's armor, they had to bring up the Long 88. The German 88mm Flak 18 gun was designed as a long-range anti-aircraft weapon. And when used against tanks, this high-velocity cannon can easily penetrate the thickest Allied armor, even at ranges of over one kilometer. Moments after the first group of British tanks has been destroyed, another group gets instantly sighted and the Long 88 starts firing at it. That's the end of this little re reenactment of the Battle of France and some of the tank uh, battles that have been in it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.